1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 24. And Saul said unto Samuel, I have sinned, I have transgressed the commandment of the Lord, and thy words, because I feared the people and obeyed their voice. He didn't fear God, he feared the people. Verse 30, And he said, I have sinned, yet honor me now, I pray thee, before the elders of my people and before Israel, and turn again with me, that I may worship the Lord thy God. So, <clears throat> we have a confession here. As we over head over to the book of Daniel, Daniel, chapter 3, <coughs> <coughs> forgive me, allergies, chapter 3, verse 29, Nebuchadnezzar, therefore I make a decree that every people, nation, language, which shall speak anything amiss against the God, capital G, of Shadrach, Meshach, and Indigo, shall be cut in pieces, and their houses shall be made in dunghill, because there is no other God that can deliver after this sort. Out of the fiery furnace. Okay. Woohoo! Yay! Okay, Nebuchadnezzar. Keeps going. And verse 9. Old Belsizer, which is Daniel, Daniel's name, uh, Babylonian name, master the magicians, because thou knowest the spirit of the holy gods, small g. Verse 18. Chapter 4, verse 18. This dream I, King Nebuchadnezzar, had. Now that old belt size is declared inter inter interpretation thereof, for as all the wise men of my kingdom are not able to make known unto me the interpretation, but thou art able, the spirit of the holy gods, small g O D S, <clears throat> is in me. We have two men that re repented. And made a declaration before and about God. And their lives were not correct. Their lives were not right. Saul never repented to the fact is <clears throat> an Old Testament salvation. <clears throat> I mean, the Old Testament salvation, man. It, it, what was the borderline between heaven and hell? Or Abraham's bosom in hell. It was very hard to tell. And then we have a Gentile king. That, oh yeah, you know, God is the great God. And then a chapter and a few verses later, gods. And then gods. You know, just because someone says a prayer doesn't mean salvation. There are plenty of people, too many to be exact, that are in hell and going to hell because they said a prayer. They're, they were not saved. <clears throat> and more so when a Christian or a deceiver, a fox in, in, in sheep's clothing, will get them to say a prayer in deception or innocently, you know, okay, I was taught to say this prayer, Romans Road, and they say a prayer and they're not saved. Friend, that's deadly. And we have biblical examples of men in the Bible, adult men, who said a prayer, who gave God the glory, and still... Now, Nebuchadnezzar, I read Nebuchadnezzar, because later on, I believe he got right. I believe he repented and exalted the God of all gods, Jehovah, the God of the Hebrews, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and Daniel. I believe he's going to be in glory. I read Saul because I think Saul went to hell. And because someone says a prayer, <coughs> hey, angels rejoice. There's a new name written in glory. And it's my, I, I, sometimes I don't think so. And I got enough old time Methodist in me that James says faith without works is dead. And listen, I know only God, Satan, and the person can be saved. Knows they're saved, has that authority of saved. Even the person sometimes. People are saved and they, you know, they lose faith, they lose their they lose their uh their meaning in God, and they think they lost it, and some have it, and you got it, you can't lose it ever. 
I understand that. But I also can understand the fact is to say that everybody that says his prayer, everybody has gone to an altar, everyone that confesses God, Saul confessed God, Nebuchadnezzar confessed God, and a few moments later in time, he mentioned God's. And it wasn't to Nebuchadnezzar's right. He said, listen, this is the God of all God. There is no other God. And I know him. Nebuchadnezzar decreed. Saul never did that. And I'm here to tell you that I stand in doubt and who's silent. Scripture say faith in works. Now works does not save us. But if you're not a new creature, you not have the new birth, you don't have an evidence as the book, Fox's book, uh, not Fox's book, uh, Pilgrim's Progress. If I deal with you and there is no evidence of salvation, there is no works that you're saved, I'm going to deal with you as a lost man. <clears throat> Now, let me tell you the dangers of getting people to say this prayer. A lot of times for the Christians and for the churches, it's a number. Ooh, look how many we got saved. <coughs> I apologize for my cough. I'm trying to get a cough drop here. That's deception. And there are people who said a prayer and got saved. There are people who said a prayer, and it took years. It took time, like the Nebuchadnezzar. There are people who got saved, and later on, God dwelt with them. But there are people like Saul who said a prayer. You know, I, I and he listen. I, <coughs> I confess, I'm guilty. I repent. Well, that's. The repentance of worldly sorrow. I got caught. What am I going to do? And I was watching a courtroom reality show program and live court cams in the court, actual courtroom, so they say. And this woman, before she goes into the, before the judge, she's in she's in the prison, the lockup. And she's telling another inmate, well, you know, if I boo-hoo-hoo, if I put a lot of tears, in, if I put a lot of emotion into it, you know, the judge will fall for it. So she stands up before the judge, and she, man, she's got tears, she's got boo-hoo, she's crying, she's pleading, uh, you know, oh, feel sorry for me. And the judge did, and gave her a lighter sentence. And then they showed that woman, the prisoner, back in lockup. With another group of people say, the judge fell for it. I ain't sorry at all. That's Saul. Now, I know people who, who said a prayer. They're in church. They stay in church. They get in their Bible. They start reading their Bible. They start witnessing. They start doing and loving God. That's salvation. That's a new creature. That's the new birth. There are people who said a prayer and they're never in church again. They never open a Bible. And they never fight their sins. I wouldn't call that salvation. <clears throat> now I know salvation is simple. Even a child could do it. But man, salvation that does not have hell is no salvation at all. Salvation that does not show the person you're dealing with. They are a sinner and all have sinned. What's he going to confess? You know, Saul never confessed his rebellion. Samuel said rebellion is witchcraft. <coughs> I apologize. And yet, the actual sins he does not confess. Uh, I had a man one time in prison. <laughs> hey, giving a lot of prison stories here. And I was dealing with him. And his life and all that <clears throat> showed me he was, I believe he wasn't saved. And I don't know. 
I don't have the power to know, but your life, if I look at your life, and like I said, if I don't think there's salvation, I'm going to deal with you as a lost sinner. Better than deception that you that maybe you're saved. So this man in prison, I'm dealing with him, and I'm treating him as a lost sinner. And at that moment, we had 20 minutes with each prisoner. Then we get a new guy come in, we deal with him. So this guy, <clears throat> I'm trying to deal with his soul. And this was his re answer each and every time. The pastor prayed for me. I said, well, sir, listen, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You are a sinner. And the wages of the sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Jesus. It's taken care of. It's taken, okay, tell me how it's taken care of. My pastor prayed for me. Sir, is there any time that you have asked and called upon Jesus Christ as your Savior, to save your soul? Yes. When was that? My pastor took care of that. My pastor prayed for me. And evidently that this guy got to a point in his life with the pastor dealing with him, and it came to the moment of salvation, calling upon Jesus Christ as Savior, and the guy didn't do it. My understanding of what he kept telling me was, was the pastor prayed for him. The pastor's prayer saved his soul. With the heart, man, with the heart believes unto righteousness, with the mouth confessions made unto salvation, I don't think that guy was saved. Your pastor can't pray for you to salvation. I've dealt with people who have said a prayer. And you listen to their testimony. And there is doubt. But you get no other answer but I said a prayer. Well, was there a time in your life that you changed and you sought the word of God? Then you sought a, well, I said that prayer is taken care of. I'll, Nebuchadnezzar got right. I believe Nebuchadnezzar is in, in heaven. Going to be in heaven. <coughs> it took Nebuchadnezzar a little while. It took a few more things in Nebuchadnezzar's life that after the tree incident, that was it. I'm turning to God. I'm tired of fighting God. And he got right. King Saul, man, the Lord dealt with him. The Lord gave him opportunity after opportunity. And he repented. But he didn't repent unto salvation. Even the Old Testament said. And <clears throat> listen, people, God has used me as a seed planter, as a waterer, and given me the opportunity to be increased. There are people who have gotten saved. God using me. <coughs> Don't tell me, oh, it's always fruitless. No, I got fruit. But I question the fruit of someone who just said a prayer and they were done the Romans road and there was no hell in Romans road check it out there is no hell in Romans road there is no gospel oh yeah there's there's a point in Romans road you know Jesus died for sinners or resurrected I think it's either death or the resurrection the gospel is that Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures and was buried and arose again the third day according to the scriptures. And Jesus said, go in the world and preach the gospel. Jesus never said, go in the world and do the Romans road. i rather give a person the gospel, give them about hell, give them the attitude about being a sinner. And if I don't think that moment is there for them to, to say any prayer, to recite anything, I'll give them some gospel tracts and give them a Bible if I've got one, and I'll send them off and treat it as seed planted and let God send a water. I am not going to go oh, say this prayer and, and to deceive them. I am not that type of person. 
Well, what if they really want to get sick? If I stand in doubt, I'll let God find it out. <coughs> and I apologize for my coughing. But there are people who repented, and it's not godly repentance. That's not salvation. There's people who declare God. I have people come to me all the time with the ministry. Are, are you saved? Yep, see that? See what? See my tattoo? What about the Are you saved? You see the tattoo? Yeah, I see a cross. I see a picture of Jesus. I see a picture of Mary. Yes, right there, that's my salvation. That's not biblical salvation. And right now I'm going to deal with you. You're lost. You can't be saved by your tattoo. I have people come up to me, you know, if you were to die today, would you know for a fact you're going to heaven? And they pull this necklace out between their breasts. Good. Well, that's a nice necklace, but Jesus Christ is no longer on the cross, and you have him nailed to the cross. Well, right there, that shows. Well, the Bible says you're not to have any idols. You have now made that cross an idol. That's a sin. Have you confessed your sin idolatry? Oh, see? And I've had people tell me, I go to church. That's not salvation. I'm a good person. The Bible says there is none good. We can't take the fact that, okay, I said a prayer. We got to drill them. We got to question them. And I will do that. I will. Uh, you know, I said a prayer. Right, I will drill them. I will put them on the stand to, to see. Was it a prayer or was it salvation? There's a big difference. And saying a prayer won't get you into heaven. But believing and trusting by faith. When I have witnessed the people before, I think one I didn't do... But usually when I have somebody <clears throat> that have come to, to know Jesus Christ as Savior, I, I say, okay, look, I want you to do, I don't say, say this prayer. I tell them, all right, at this moment now, I would just want you to speak openly to God. And I want you to, to ask him to save your soul and whatever comes out of your heart, speak. And I don't help them. Now, a few men, I, I, I because of prison, and I had to go home, and they had to stay. I don't know what the, I don't know what took. I don't know if it was real or genuine. I, I, I'm not the one that saves. God does. And I could have some failures under my belt. But let's look at Saul and Nebuchadnezzar. Saul never got right. That's not salvation. Nebuchadnezzar, it took a little time, but I believe he got right. That's salvation. And if you're walking around carnally minded, not even trying to open and read the Bible, you're not trying to find a good Bible believing church, you're not trying to please God at all, and then you tell me I said a prayer. I'm going to deal with you as a lost man. And I'm going to have a little prayer with the person that had you say a prayer. And it's not going to be good with God. And my prayer would be, Lord God, Father, I don't know the circumstances. But Lord, the person that brought this person before you and if their motive was just to say a prayer and it was absolutely no salvation at all and actually was deception and i don't know lord god lord the, the, that led this person to say this prayer i turned them over to the devil for the destruction of the flesh that they may not deceive others Now, I don't have the power and I don't have the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding to know if a man's saved or not. But I have dealt with people enough that they had said this prayer 
and there's doubt of salvation. 